Welcome to the Orthodontics and Summary Podcast, where Farouk brings you the key points and understanding of orthodontic webinars, conferences, and papers in a concise podcast with your host, Farouk Ahmed. Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's lecture is entitled Bonding for an Exquisite Finish, Concepts of Bracket Bonding by Dahlia L. Bockel. This is part one of a three-part series of podcasts covering her lectures. The first part is going to focus very much on the concepts of bracket positioning and Dahlia's own take to achieve more predictable outcomes. Just to recap, the podcast is the opinion of myself and may not be 100% accurate or representative, although we try our best to do so. The podcast is not endorsed by an institute or by a speaker and is the independent work of myself and the orthodontics in summary team. Right, now that's out of the way, let's get on with the lecture. Dahlia started off by describing the current bracket positioning techniques and there are three key ideas out there. The first is that of the middle-middle. This is where the bracket is positioned both in the middle vertically and in the middle horizontally of each individual tooth, otherwise known as the FA point or the LA point. However, Dahlia mentioned there are challenges using this method. If the gingiva is swollen or the tooth isn't fully erupted, it results in an inaccuracy taking place. Also, we have to measure each aspect of the tooth, both mesial distal and also its height, to ensure accuracy. Method two is bracket charts. So this was popularized in 1994 by Benton McLaughlin, and here they use tooth charts, measured from the incisal tip to where the bracket should be positioned. Usually the incisors are positioned at 4mm from the incisal edge, then we have a step to the lateral incisor going a bit higher, and the canines coming back down to the level of the central incisor or millimeter beyond. Now Dahlia mentioned the challenges with using bracket charts. First of all, were they designed for idealized size tooth and not for uneven marginal ridges? Also, they can flatten the smiles specifically around the canine region. Now, the third method is that of the smile arc protection, which was a new concept for me. And this was popularized by Tom Pitts. But to explain this, it's all based around the consonants of the smile. This method involves starting with the canine. So the canine is positioned in its bracket, gingival to the contact point with the first premolar. The lateral incisor is positioned 0.75 or 1 mm cervical to the canine. So we're going to get some relative extrusion of the lateral incisor. Then the central incisor is 1.5 mm further cervical to the canine. Now, Dahlia mentioned that this is ideal from a consonant smile perspective, but can produce a deep bite in using it as a method of bracket positioning. So Dahlia's solution is to take a customized approach to each patient. To take all these factors of the marginal ridge height, the upper incisor show, two size and shape, inclination and overbite. And this is her approach to the three planes of positioning of brackets in the direct approach looking at the meso-distal width, looking at the axial position and the vertical position of the brackets. So starting off, how does Dali recommend positioning meso-distal position of the tooth? Well, we're aiming for the middle of the meso-distal width of each tooth. Now, there are some challenges. The first of that is the first molar. Now, this tooth can be a challenge if it has an extra cusp. If we follow the tube design, which is usually for the meso-buckle groove, it can actually position the whole tube mesially, causing a distal in rotation. So Dahlia's solution to this is to be strict and aim for the center of the tooth. And this will fall outside of that mesobuccal groove. Now what Dahlia mentioned is that the bracket base can be modified with using vine guards to ensure it adapts correctly to the tooth or using extra composite. The second adaptation is to consider canines. These are the exception. We are not aiming for the middle of the mesial distal width of the tooth. For if we do do this, we create a mesial in rotation. So how do we resolve this? Well, we could do wire bends towards the end, or we can position the bracket more mesially. And Dahlia says this applies to all canines, both upper and lower. The second component of bracket positioning, the axial position or the tip. So for this, Dahlia recommends drawing the long axis on a set of study models. She uses the OPG or CBCT for greater accuracy to draw this long axis. Now modifications to this, well where we have extractions that have taken place, we want 5 degrees of overcorrection adjacent to the extraction site to prevent dumping in. 
We also want to overcorrect severely tipped teeth. And she mentioned this is usually the case for early loss of first permanent molars when positioning the seven tubes. Next was the vertical position of the bracket. Now for me, this was the best bit of the entire lecture, where we got to really see how Dahlia achieves her exquisite finishes, but the understanding that she has behind it. So how does this begin? Well, it starts with the posterior teeth, working from the posterior molars through to the canines. She bonds relative to the marginal ridges. So this is a concept by Kalanje in 2007. And the idea is that the marginal ridges are drawn on the cast itself. So this is good working from our outcome of our treatment and working backwards to it. Once the marginal ridge heights are drawn on the cast, and it's the incisal aspect of that marginal ridge, then the slot line is drawn. And the slot line simply is the middle bit of our brackets. And this is then calculated depending on which bracket system is used. When it comes to looking at the anterior teeth, the idea is that the canine tooth itself is positioned so the marginal ridge height matches that of the first premolar. When it comes to the lateral incisor, a bracket gauge is used. And this goes from the tip of the canine to the bracket slot, and 0.25 millimeters is added. So therefore, the bracket of the lateral incisor is positioned a fraction more cervical. When it comes to the central incisor, 0.25 to 0.5 millimeters is added to that canine height. And the premise of this is to follow essentially Tom Pitt's idea. It's a smile arc protection, but a more subtle version. Dahlia promotes this as a concept, as there's less deep difference in the connectors when compared to Tom Pitt's approach. Now, what are the modifications to this? Well, for deep bite cases, the brackets can be positioned a millimetre more incisal, for AOB cases, a millimetre more gingival to help achieve those occlusal outcomes. Now, Dahlia went on to talk about the vertical bracket position height and the torque expression. Now, this was a concept that I was aware of. However, she went into great detail to explain the effects of it. And I thought it was really well done by Dahlia. So when it comes to our anterior teeth, what happens if we position the brackets more cervically? Well, we're going to get less labial crown torque and more extrusion of the teeth. But actually, if we position the brackets more incisal, we're going to get greater labial crown torque. And there was a great finance element study by Papa Giorgio in 2017, which explained that the changes in our vertical position of our anterior teeth can change the torque by up to 94% and is far more influential than the bracket prescription itself. What about molar teeth? Well, actually, the morphology of the posterior teeth and the vertical height can make a significant difference to the torque expression, more so than anywhere else in the mouth. We know a 0.5 millimeter change of the lower molar teeth can result in almost a 5 degree difference in torque. So a significant difference for a really small area in bracket positioning. And what Dahlia told us to be aware of was the lower molar bracket. We may position them more gingival if we've got a deep bite case. However, we'll get greater lingual crown torque as a result of this and a greater buccal overjet. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Part 2 will be out in the following week, and it's a great series of lectures by Dahlia El Bokel. Of course, if you've enjoyed the episode, please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.